Money isn't what it used to be. Gone are the days of clinking coins and paper bills. Today, money is code. Decentralized, borderless and evolving faster than ever. From bartering livestock to minting gold coins, humanity's quest for better money has shaped empires and economies. But now, a revolution is underway. Bitcoin, Ethereum and digital currencies are dismantling traditional finance, challenging banks and redefining value itself. How did we get here? What does this mean for the future? And why should you care? In this video, we'll unravel the past, present and future of money. We'll explore how blockchain technology is rewriting the rules, why governments are racing to launch digital currencies and whether this shift will empower or endanger the world. Let's dive in. Thousands of years ago, humans traded goods directly, a sack of grain for a tool, livestock for cloth. But bartering was inefficient. What if the blacksmith didn't need grain? Societies turned to rare, durable objects. Cowrie shells, salt, gold, these became commodity money, universal tokens of value. Then came coins. The Lydians in 600 BCE minted the first standardized currency, stamped with insignias to guarantee purity and weight. Empires like Rome and China used coins to fund conquests and trade. But metal was heavy. By the 7th century, China pioneered paper money, a promise from the state that paper could hold real value. Fast forward to the 20th century. Banks digitized money, replacing vaults with databases. Credit cards, wire transfers and online banking made money intangible. But this system had flaws. Slow cross-border payments, hidden fees and centralized control. Then, in 2008, as the global financial system crumbled, an anonymous programmer named Satoshi Nakamoto offered a radical alternative, Bitcoin. Today, digital currencies are reshaping finance in three explosive ways. First, financial inclusion. Over 1.4 billion people lack bank accounts. But with a $50 smartphone, they can access Bitcoin wallets or stablecoins, tokens pegged to stable assets like the dollar. In Argentina and Nigeria, crypto shield savings from inflation. In war zones, it's a lifeline for aid. Second, DeFi, decentralized finance. Platforms like Uniswap and Compound let users trade, earn interest or borrow without banks. Want a loan? Put up crypto as collateral and algorithms set the terms. No credit checks, no bankers. Over $80 billion is locked in DeFi today. Third, mainstream adoption. Visa settles transactions in USD coin. PayPal lets users buy crypto. Even Wall Street is all in. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, Fidelity's crypto retirement plans, and central banks, China's digital yuan, Europe's digital euro, and the Bahamas' sand dollar are piloting CBDCs, government-backed digital cash. But challenges loom. Bitcoin's energy use sparks climate debates. Regulators fear crypto enables crime and volatility remains a barrier. Nobody wants their paycheck in a currency that could crash 20% overnight. Still, momentum is unstoppable. El Salvador made Bitcoin legal tender. NFTs turned digital art into a $10 billion market. And Web3 promises a decentralized internet where users own their data and monetize it. The message? Money is no longer just a tool. It's software, culture, and a new form of sovereignty. So what's next? Imagine a hybrid system. Central bank digital currencies could replace cash, streamlining taxes and welfare. Stablecoins might power global trade. Bitcoin could evolve into digital gold, a safe haven during crises. One thing's clear, the power to control money, once held by kings and banks, is now in the hands of coders, entrepreneurs and everyday users. The future of finance will be open, programmable and fiercely debated. Where do you stand? Drop your thoughts below.